So I have edited videos on quite a few different computers now, with the Apple stuff still being the best by far. I thought if I bought the latest Intel CPU and Nvidia GPU, it should be at least as good as my M1 Max, if not way better. In my last video, I showed what my first tests were like with my new computer I built and that I was kind of underwhelmed with it. See, the reason I bought this stuff was because I found this chart from the Puget Systems and it made a lot of sense to me as to why my previous Windows computers sucked at video editing. I never had a CPU that supported hardware decoding until I tried the Apple stuff and I realized that's what you want. It makes a huge difference. Long story long, I now have a 14th gen Intel CPU with quick sync, which supports the codecs my Sony camera shoots. Plus I now have a 40 series GPU, which everyone says is the one to get. So why isn't this absolutely ripping? In my last video, I was expecting a lot of the things to have better performance, like the frames per second and Magic Mask, and just the overall editing experience. After all, I was shooting in the supported H.265 codec, at least according to this chart, so WTF. I decided to go back to my bread and butter, shooting in 4K30 at XAVCS or H.264. Sure, it's not supported according to the chart, but what the heck, I may as well test it out, right? Well, guess what? It blows the doors off of H.265 when it comes to smooth editing. Yeah, even though my new setup supposedly doesn't support hardware decoding for H.264, it is so much of a better experience to work on straight out of camera than H.265. Ugh, I had been shooting in H.265 exclusively because I thought it would be better, it's supported. I do think it has the best quality, but really you can't tell the difference when it comes to making content for YouTube. So check this out. The file on the left is H.264 and the file on the right is H.265. Look what happens when I scrub on the H.265. The CPU stays low while the onboard graphics with the iGPU take off. That's what you'd expect. Now watch when I switch to the H.264. The CPU takes off, but the iGPU stops completely and just uses the GPU. This is interesting because the CPU scrubbing is actually smoother than the supported quick sync scrubbing. But here's where it gets interesting. When we go over to the Magic Mask in H.265, when I do it, it uses both the iGPU and the Nvidia graphics card and gets around 28 frames per second on average, which is what I got in my last video and I was kind of bummed out with that. Let's do this with the H.265 video. Look at that. I get up to 57 frames per second, so practically double. It uses no iGPU, just the CPU and the GPU, but this is a huge difference. I did not expect that. For fun, I decided to make proxies for both files to see what happens. With H.265 footage, you would want to make proxies as the editing experience really isn't quite good enough on its own. And as you'd expect, once you get it to proxies, it's smooth like butter. In this format, the Magic Mask hits the same speeds as the H.264 without proxies, and like the unsupported H.264, the proxies do not use the quick sync or hardware decoding benefits you want them to, yet it's way faster than using the iGPU. And just FYI, I tried making proxies in both H.264 and H.265, and it didn't seem to make a difference. I thought that it might, but it didn't. So what's my takeaway from all of this? It's this. Hardware encoding and decoding is great on Apple, I don't know what kind of media engines they use, but my goodness, I was able to edit H.265 footage straight out of camera with my Sony without proxies, and it was a great video editing experience. I hoped that since my new CPU supports hardware decoding for H.265, that it would be at least as good as the Silicon Max chips when it comes to smoothness and video editing straight out of camera. It certainly is not close as good which is why I thought maybe it was the lack of the GPU. And so I got the 4080 and it didn't make a ton of difference like I hoped that it would. When I went back to the unsupported H.264 codec, my editing experience became much better. Now it's much more of a smooth video editing experience right out of camera like I was hoping for. I'm just kind of confused at how I got here. I'm basically getting the results I want now because I don't mind shooting in H.264, but I'm getting those results even though hardware decoding is not supported in this codec. So I didn't need to buy an Intel, a CPU that is going through some really bad stuff right now. Look, I wish I could test out the old AMD 7800X3D chip, you know, just maybe the GOAT CPU for gaming and maybe get an affordable AMD GPU, but I just, I can't afford to do those tests. Look, I'm still happy with my new setup. It games well, and now after all my testing, it video edits well now that I know which codecs to use. 
I guess I thought I'd be stuck editing an H.265 because that's what Intel supports, but I'm not. Editing that codec is just brutally hard and it really shows. If you are going to be stuck working in H.265, you'll wanna use proxies. If you don't mind working in H.264 like me, and you have a pretty fancy video card and CPU combo, you can edit straight out of camera and it will be a solid experience. To be honest, I don't know if this iGPU quick sync is worth beans. I will talk more about video editing with the newer video cards soon because I actually don't have the 4080 Super anymore. I returned it and got this instead. This is the 4070 Ti Super and I paid a lot less for it. It's not quite as good, but it basically is. Anyway, I'll talk more about this card in a future video. What do you think about all of this? Are you surprised with my results? I built everything expecting it to rip up video editing in H.265 and it didn't. It was disappointing for that. I switched to editing in the unsupported H.264 format and it absolutely shreds and hits the numbers I was initially hoping for. Weird. Okay. That's it for today. H.264 is way easier to edit in DaVinci Resolve than H.265. Do I have regrets selling my M1 Max? No, gaming on my new computer is awesome. In case you missed my 4080 Super video, check that out here. Otherwise, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. Also, if you are curious about the 4070 Ti Super, I will talk about that in a future video, so stay tuned. If you are able to support the channel by thumbs upping the video or subscribing to the channel, I'd really love to have you. I would appreciate it and it's the only way my channel can grow. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the SAD Studio.